Hello and welcome back to Road CC Recommends. This is our monthly show where we tell you all about the best cycling products that we've reviewed on the site over the past month. So it should give you the most up-to-date advice about what products are worth your money. But that isn't all that this show is about. We've got buying advice, a route for you to ride, and a cafe to stop at. Now, Jamie, we've got 18 products, so we kind of need to get a shift on that today. That is a lot of products. Yeah. So I'll kick off with the Sony Link Buds S, which are an excellent pair of earbuds for cycling or everyday use. With a huge amount of adjustability, impressive sound, and one of the best transparency modes for cycling that we've used. So Sony has designed these to be always wearable, and they are marketed at the very thing that our tester, George, feels is important in a set of earbuds for when you're riding. And that is having the ability to hear what's around you. Mm. Their ambient noise functionality is up there with the top performance that he has used, being on par with the Apple AirPods Pro and Beats Fit Pro. The sound quality is very good, and as is the noise cancelling, you know, sometimes <laughs> you just want to shut out the world personally, you know, um, that is right up there too. So that's £149 for those. And moving on, a set of wheels that you rode. Yeah, absolutely. The Hunt Aerodynamicist UD Carbon Spoke Wheels feature, funnily enough, carbon spokes. Oh. So you get the carbon spokes, and this is also Hunt going back into the hookless rim game. Yeah. But, and that does mean they're pretty light, 12, 40 grams. Yeah, I found the weight to be one of the main features. Obviously, these wheels are kind of designed for a rider like me that just likes smashing it up the hills. Mm -hmm. But I will say that they are not slow on the flat either. So you do get a little bit of an aerodynamic advantage over a real shallow section. Mm -hmm. um, you can roll uphill quickly along the flat quickly. Excellent. I really like them. And what about setting up tubeless tyres? Really, really easy. Nice. Um, some of the easiest that I've set up. Um, they're not bad at £1,199 in terms of mm. value but you can save a bit of cash if you want to go for them without the carbon spokes yeah. or something from Hunt without carbon spokes. You might not get the hookless rim, but hmm. yeah, these are good value. So now for a bar bag that works with aero extensions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this bar bag would, it is really getting super niche. Restraps Race Aero Bag is designed to work with aero bars on long distance adventure rides. It fits securely to the bike, and even when loaded up, there's minimal sway. The two-piece design makes it easy to grab or remove kit from your bike, should the need for speed be important. And though it's not cheap, it is excellently well made. Yeah, uh, so basically, if you like using aero bars on your bike packing bike mm. for a bit of extra comfort, this bike's just gonna make life a whole lot easier, basically. Yeah. Next up is one of the nicest looking bikes that I think either of us has seen in years. Yeah, take a bow, Riley. This frame is finished just beautifully. The Fusion uses investment cast tube junctions to create a frame with the most graceful of lines. You might even mistake it for carbon. But you still get that excellent titanium ride feel, which combined with the geometry means that you can ride the Fusion as hard and as fast as you like in comfort for many, many miles. This thing is 8.27 uh, kilos, has fully integrated cable routing. Does clean. It doesn't have uh, rack or guard mounts, which mm. I think points to the way this bike should be ridden. Yeah. It's got a lifetime warranty, but our build is all tricked out and it did cost £8,699. Yeah, that's um, the new Ultegra Di2 on that. Yes. Um, anyway, we've got to move on as we've got so many products to look at. This is the Albion ABR1 Pocket Bib Shorts, a set of gravel specific bibs that feature side pockets and a clever rear stash pocket an incredibly comfortable and non-intrusive elastic interface pad and a perfect fit. Yeah, the shorts themselves are made from four-way stretch recycled fabrics mm. and you get two pockets at the sides, each one generous enough to fit a smartphone and some snacks. Got you can take everything with you. Yeah. The large rear pocket is a clever solution to stashing an item of clothing when you're on the move, such as a gilet or lightweight jacket. And because the pocket is side entry and a decent diameter, it's easy to cram clothing in without having to stop or look at what you're doing. 145 quid for those. Mm, we've awful. seen worse. Yep. 
So next up, we've got an electric touring mountain bike from Reesen Muller. Is that how I said? Yes, it's very niche as well. Excellent. It costs the best part of 10 grand, but it is really good. There are twin batteries with 1,125 watt hour capacity, 14 speed Rollhoff hub gears with an electronic shifting, the option of a rear and or front rack, water bottle mount, bike lights, and <laughs> front full beam what? lighting. It does weigh 28.7 kilos, Ouch. but it is housing a Bosch Performance Line CX motor. 150 millimeters of travel from the Fox Float 36 Performance <laughs> Fork and the tunable 140 millimeter travel uh, Fox Float <laughs> DPS Performance Shock. So the Roloff belt oh, drive thing. combo <laughs> has outstanding low maintenance credentials, claiming to need an oil change after the first 3,000 miles, while the Gates belt should last around 20,000 miles. That really does look like a lot of fun, mm. I have to say, that bike. And it packs in a lot of tech. Yes, it really does. Should do for 10 grand. <laughs> and that weight. Yes. Anyway, if you don't like chest strap heart rate sensors, then this Kuspu HW807 is a great alternative. The data it yields tracks very closely that from a chest strap sensor. Yep. Um, the built-in lithium ion battery is small with Kuspu <laughs> claiming a 20 hour battery life. And while that means that the unit's about two thirds of the size of the chest straps transmitter, it also means you can't squander power waiting for action. Mm. That means you'll have to turn it on before you put it on but we didn't really find that an issue, like first world problems. Yeah. 50 pounds might seem like a lot, but it provides accurate data and means that you don't have to wear a chest strap if you find them uncomfortable. Hmm. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> right, let's have a quick break now for our route of the month. Liam, you've just been out in the French Alps and you've chosen yes. this one for us. And have I chosen you a route? Right then, Jamie, we mm. are starting in the lovely town of Bourgoison. And lovely. That's at the bottom of Alpe d'Huez, but we're not mm -hmm. doing the Alpe today. We're going to go a little bit along the valley road, hike a right, and we're going to go up past the lakes, over yeah. the Quad Fair, which we yes. both know pretty. I quite like. Yeah, and the reservoirs are pretty as well. The reservoir is very mm. pretty. Site of our cafe stop later. Um, so we're going to go up the Quad Fair, which mm -hmm. is like 30 kilometers from the actual base. So you've got some climbing to do, <laughs> funnily um, enough, in the Alps. Um, it's quite steep at the bottom, then it goes into a village, descends mm -hmm. a bit so you lose some of your height, which just <laughs> feels great. Um, then it goes really steep again, descends again, goes really steep again, and then you're kind of going up past another lake reservoir thing. That's what we like. We're gonna get down to the valley road, go left, mm -hmm. down the valley road, and then it's climbing again. Oh, so we've got to go favorite. up the Glandon, which absolutely kills you. It, <laughs> it's, I think it's only something like 19 kilometers in length and it starts out pretty gently and it can lull you into false sense of security. It is a brutal climb. But as we both know, those final three kilometers mm. are just horrific. And it's not just the elevation, but well, it is the elevation, but the altitude yes. has a bit of an effect, doesn't it? You're up at about 2000 meters by the end of it, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But also the way that the valley climbs you climb up this valley with a bowl in front of you and you can see the wall which you've got to get over and it <laughs> never seems to, you never seem to be getting up the wall but also that valley kind of channels the air down at you so there's i think always a headwind in uh, my mind there's right. always a headwind. well i think liam could rabbit on about this all day so yeah. check out the route and yeah uh, yeah gland on savage go and ride it if you get up it well done it's an achievement Ortlieb's Quick Rack is an affordable and versatile luggage system for bikes with eyelets and even frames without as long as they're not made out of carbon. The rack is super quick to mount and take off, making it an excellent temporary option for carrying a decent amount of cargo. So this rack has a maximum load capacity of 20 kg and its 10 millimeter diameter tubing is constructed of aluminium. Weight wise, this one comes in at 580 grams, but Ortlieb also offers a light version that weighs 440. So at 70 pounds, it's reasonably priced next to the competition mm. and it can be installed in 15 seconds and removed in five 
That's brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Santini Karma Kinetic Bib Shorts provide a really good compressive fit, a comfortable pad, and excellent breathability. These are great for hot summer days on the bike. Mm -hmm. The leg length was perfect for our tester. The grippers are great, the pad is comfy, and the straps provide loads of support. Basically, Santini knows what it's doing when it <laughs> comes to making shorts, so we'd happily pay out 125 quid for these. Yeah, not bad. Absolutely. The Schwalbe G1 RS tyres focuses on gravel racing, where speed is a priority and it sits at the top of the brand's best gravel tyre lineup. For the price, you would rightly expect impressive performance to back up the claims, and that is exactly what you get a supple tyre that feels fast and grips really on surfaces that it maybe shouldn't. <laughs> um, yeah, the low tread pattern, really good. It's got to be Schwalbe, not Schwalbe though, isn't it? Oh, sorry. i got to be. Pronunciation. Anyway, off-road on typical British gravel trails, yeah. it was confident through the corners with the more pronounced edge tread certainly working. Of course, to unlock the performance, you'll need to build up your confidence and yeah. throw it into some corners and trust the tyres for maximum traction benefits. That's a big trust exercise. Mm. As a semi-slick tyre, there will always be a compromise and there are a few areas where it will struggle. Slippery mud and muddy ruts in particular were a challenge, but it would be unfair to critique it for this because, well, it's not really designed for that. No, and so the only real downside is that they're super pricey at £75 per tyre. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Not awful. 75 not, miles not bad. You not can't bad. say that. Awful. You'll get ripped to shreds. <laughs> the Endura FS260 Pro Aerogel mitts are comfortable, breathable and grippy with a decent but not overwhelming amount of padding. You still get some road fill whilst they dampen out the worst impacts from rough roads, bumps and jolts. So one of the most notable elements here is the palm. It's a siliconed microfiber and the pads on the bottom of the hand have a much thicker, almost kind of plastic covering. Our reviewer loved the comfort, though neither of us can be judged here because, well, neither of us wear mitts. No, and that's probably why we've got scars and Ruined missing hands. skin and things. Anyway. But one thing that we both love is the Met Trenta helmet. Mm. This is the 3K Carbon Mips version, which costs a tidy £280. But seeing as you reviewed it, mate, do you want to tell us about it? I did. Well, we both actually spent our own money on the old Met Trenta, didn't yep. we? The 3K Carbon one, because it looks really cool. Yep. And this one, well, Met have taken a, if it don't, if, if if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Is That's that the, the approach one. that they take? That's taken? the saying. Funny that. But they have added MIPS technology somehow mm. without adding any weight or affecting the breathability. And they've added 15 pounds to the price tag, which over five years isn't yeah. like that's inflation. And plus for MIPS, I'd say that's not a bad yeah. price to pay. So brilliant helmet, still brilliant looks, light. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for a road lid, we'd highly recommend very nice. this. Right then, time for some buying advice, I think. Yes, this month we're looking at all things multi-tools. There's a vast selection out there, but which one should you choose and what criteria should your new purchase meet? Mm. Well, the first thing I'd do is go and have a wander around my bike. What sort of bolts are on it? You're going yeah. to want a few Allen bits at the very least, but I know, for example, that I'll also need a T25 Torx bit and that's immediately going to discount loads of options. Next, decide if you want one with a chain breaker. It's ah. obviously a useful tool to have. Oh, have you got one here? Yeah. That's a chain breaker. Mm. Uh, but it does make that tool quite bulky. Mm. Speaking of bulk, how are you going to carry it? I prefer a credit card shaped one, so sort of like this, if I'm going to carry it in a jersey pocket. But that does come at the sacrifice of bit length. Like this is actually quite a long bit for mm. a credit card style one, and it's still not that long. So the good thing about these is mm. that if you pass this here, yeah. then your chain tool actually adds leverage. So you oh. don't have to just hold I it didn't like know that. that. There you go, there's a, there's a top tip for <laughs> wow. you. So we think that the sweet spot for us roadies is about 10 to 12 functions that will sort you out the majority of roadside issues without weighing you down too much. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. But then for commuting, I pop a bigger 20 function tool in my bag as weight and storage is less an issue yes, on that sort of ride. Absolutely. And the consequences of not fixing your bike 
are kind of much higher. Oh, exactly. Miss I'd money. miss out on this. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, just like us, multi-tools have a hard life. They often get stored in sweaty, grubby places. I don't get stored <laughs> in sweaty, grubby places. What is your script? <laughs> it's one of those areas where you very often get what you pay for. Sometimes the cheaper options are just a false economy and won't last anywhere near as long. Yeah, rather than trawl through those boring manufacturer material choices, you can head over to the review section of Road CC where we're given our verdict on lots of the most popular choices. Yeah, absolutely. And unlike this guy who keeps his in the jersey pocket, saddlebag. <laughs> saddlebag is where you want to keep them because we all use saddlebags, don't we, mate? We don't use saddlebags. We don't it's like useless. them. Our next product is the Velo Bike Plus. This is a simple to use e-folder with the excellent latest generation all-in-one hub Zeus motor system. They offer steel and titanium frames for both their regular and electric variants. Our test bike came with a steel frame and the optional schlumpf mountain drive gearing, <laughs> which no <laughs> is two gears housed in the bottom bracket, changed by tapping your heel on the push button in the base of the crank. That's quite clever isn't it's it? It's quite unique. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's also plenty of proprietary technology on the Velo Bike Plus from the rear elastometer suspension block that doubles as a magnet to hold the hinged rear triangle to the mainframe <laughs> and then there's the hinged front fork that also features a magnet and hook fixing. Working in concert these two elements keep the whole thing together. I love magnets. That's insane <laughs> isn't it? Folding this is a breeze and we're big fans of the way it rides too. So next up, who doesn't love a pair of socks? The Oro Sporty socks are well made, they fit well and cost just a tenner. I like the simple design. Yeah, and we both like a pair of white socks, don't we? Oh, you can't beat them. Yeah. White socks, yeah. yeah. Even during the winter when they turn grey. Yeah. But anyway. Oh, I tested this yeah, jersey. Yeah, you did. Yeah, so the Universal Colours Spectrum Light men's short sleeve jersey, which is a stupidly long name, is made entirely from post-consumer recycled Italian fabrics and is extremely light and breathable so ideal for summer riding, which is just what I've been doing in it. Its performance was excellent during the recent 35 degree heat waves, and though it's easily a match for other jerseys at the same price, that 120 price is still not insignificant. It's not. Um, some lightweight jerseys though can lack a bit of structure, and mm. you were saying that the material here has kind of just enough stretch to be tight without being kind of too tight. <laughs> it's breathable and fast drying, so it does an excellent job of wicking away sweat to keep you cool and comfortable. The seams are very low profile and the Universal Colours says that they're ultrasonically welded. Whether that involves Doctor Who or not, I can't say, but it certainly seems to work. That's, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I like the design anyway. Most people do. It's a bit of like Marmite. People either yeah. love it or hate it. Right, let's take a very quick break here to look at our cafe of the month. I'm gonna go continental here and recommend one from the Alps. Oh, have you been to the Alps? I've been, funnily <laughs> enough, I have been to the oh, Alps. Give us a break. <laughs> oh. <laughs> La Guignette is on the shores of Lac de Verne and sitting there with a cold beer in the sun, I think I was at my happiest ever. I was content. There were beautiful climbs in the local area. Um, and mm -hmm. this place serves food until about 2 p.m. And they're very French about it. Mm -hmm. So if you go there after 2 p.m., no food for you. Yeah, rub it uh, in. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, now, I hate to tear us away from the absolute dream ride, uh, but we've got to do one more product before we can announce the product of the month. Okay. The Brompton Engineering for Change is a book that delves into the business aspect of the famous folding bike company. While that might sound a bit dry, it's actually pretty good. And in large part, that's thanks to the excellent writing of author Dan Davies. So Brompton, the business, is renowned for its effective use of PR. You want to make a TV program about bicycles or British manufacturing, just go to Brompton. Need some comment about the state of the bicycle business? Mm. Brompton is ready when you are. You're a politician looking for a photo op. <laughs> Brompton's got it. Um, undertaking an unusual adventure? Have an unusual bike. Have we seen Boris on a Brompton? I don't, I don't really anyway. care. <laughs> In many ways, a book is a logical extension of this attitude. Much of this approach surely comes from CEO Butler Adams. He has a clear objective and is a great communicator. As anyone who has heard him speak will testify. 
that makes him well suited for being enthusiastic about his business and explaining his decisions as well as co-writing a book about it. Sounds like a good one to sink your teeth into if you're a bit business minded. Right then, Jamie, let's reveal our product of the month. Ooh. Shall I do you a drum roll? Yes, please. It is the Carrera Subway All-Weather Edition Hybrid Bike. Whoa. At just £450 and with loads of brilliant features, we just couldn't look past this as yeah. an exceptional commuting option. And if you're looking for something to get you across town to work or down to the shops, we wouldn't bother looking any further. Yeah, this is an urban warrior that comes out of the box with some very useful winter riding accessories mm. and an excellent spec for a very modest price. Oh, and it's fun. It's easy to ride too, thanks to the gears, brakes and tires that are all very, very good for mm. the money. Even the saddle's quite decent. Mm, that is rare. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to winter though. Yeah. Anyway, three things make this an all weather bike. It comes with mud guards. It has heated grips to keep your hands warm Ooh. in winter. And you get a pair of LED lights to yeah. help you be seen on dark evenings. And <laughs> LED lights, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we go back to heated grips? We can, yes. Press and hold the end cap until the green LED comes on and they quickly heat up. Our tester measured them at 40 degrees, which is plenty to help mm. fight off the chill. They yeah. claim to last up to two hours, but customer reviews report shorter run times when it's cold. <laughs> so when you want to use them. So take that with a pinch of salt. Nevertheless, if you've got a half hour commute, they'll definitely keep your hands toasty. You're still going to need gloves to keep the, the wind off your hands, but what a cool feature to have. Yeah, absolutely. I can think of mm. um, a few commutes, re not recently, last year, uh, <laughs> where they would have been very, very welcome. The mm. Subway AWE's ride is quite firm, thanks to a beefy aluminium mm. frame and rigid steel fork. And the handling, while not twitchy, it's on the quick side. Mm. The ride feel is easily softened by running the tires a bit softer, and they're plenty big enough that you're never gonna really pinch flat them while running them soft. Mm. Well, well, we've got to give kudos to Halfords for the gear selection here. Up front, there's a 4630 chain set combined with an 1136 set for a 502% gear range. Yeah. More importantly, there are plenty of low gears so that you can comfortably get up just about anything in a UK city. So we think that more bikes, not just gravel bikes mm. and urban bikes, should be geared like this. Yeah, the shifting is great for the money, as are the brakes. There's loads of power control, you know, all that jazz. Full house. The Carrera Subway AWE is an excellent flat bar bike for round town and recreational riding. It handily straddles the gap between a classic hybrid and a rigid mountain bike, but just stays on the road friendly side of that line. Essentially what we're saying, that if there's a better bike out there for less than 500 quid, we haven't heard about it. Yeah, so highly really recommended good. this one and mm. an excellent deserving winner. Okay, so on that note, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.